I just turned this on. Okay, so I'm here today with Marianne. I don't know who out there recognizes you, Marianne. You've done a handful of videos. This is Marianne Miller. And of course, a bunch of folks know your pop, Ken Miller. And Marianne was here in town in Miami for a whole different reason and had already said to me, Aim, I'm gonna stop by Body Science. You have spent a lot of time in this clinic in the past because you've come on over and spent time with your dad and your dad is no longer with us. Okay, so what we wanted to do was kind of update everybody yep. on all kinds of stuff. You, how you're doing, Ken Miller and his legacy. Yes. Uh, and coming in today. So I switch over to you. Hey, Marianne, tell us what's been going on. Tell us about you. So last December, my dad unfortunately passed on, not from ALS. Uh, he had a number of complications from COVID and secondary re uh, respiratory issues. And he left this earth, but his light has been back and brighter than ever. Uh, a lot of things we talked about, and one thing I had promised was to continue on his legacy and fighting his fight for not only himself, but for everyone. And with that, we created the ALS Body Science Foundation. And I'm so happy to be here today because it just re energizes you of how important that is to do something to help body science and the patients that come here and just the overall mission of helping everyone get better. All right, so here's the, let, let's give everybody a history. So I met your dad when he came down the first time in 2019, and then he came back around 2021, towards the end of COVID. But tell us your dad's story. Ken was a really interesting ALS story because by the time I had met your dad, he had already had ALS for a long time yeah. and fell into a category where I think lots of people had felt that he would not respond to treatment because he'd had the disease for so long. Exactly. And uh, as we continued to treat, we kept seeing more and more improvements. And so will you tell us a story of first how long your dad was diagnosed and how long he had symptoms? Come on, let's talk about your dad. Tell yeah. us more. Yeah. So for 10 years, we ha or he had ALS. Um, he had a slow progression to begin with, and then it really kicked in about year three and four. We traveled all over the country. We've tried everything from energy healing to acupuncture to detoxing to muscle testing and finally found ourselves with Amy at the Healing ALS conference and we knew that that was the missing piece to our puzzle. So when we traveled down here and we looked at labs and infections, it was so exciting to piece everything together. And but that's when we figured out there were a handful of infections that had gone, I assume, years untreated, meaning labs can't really tell us when somebody comes in contact with that infection. Um, but your dad's pathogen or infection labs were pretty significant. Yes, and then so we conquered the infections and mm -hmm. he started to get better. He saw improvement in a lot of his face. He couldn't smile properly. He got his big smile back, his fingers, his toes. He could lift his left leg and his right leg, things that he lost the ability to do balance was huge for him we were able to stand him up he was able to hold his core up his shoulders back and and the the point i think even though i know i've said it but just to repeat it how long did your dad have symptoms of als and diagnosis at that point over 10 years so the reason i bring that up for everybody that's watching what we're talking about is not just the restoration of function we're talking about somebody that had als for over 10 years that responds to treatment yeah right so that, that's pretty that's pretty great and after surgeries too that like we that was what we started out with we thought um maybe it was some pinched nerves so we he had a lower back uh surgery and then fusion his neck which i'm just gonna side note find out if you're allergic to titanium because i definitely think that was a huge issue in progressing him from not getting stronger and better what that surgery is supposed to do. Did you guys go through clinical trials? We did. Um, the uh, the Nudexta one. 
Yeah. Yeah. I guess the only reason I say that is not so much clinical trials for people that are looking, but you, the description that you gave about trying stuff, it didn't really speak to all the academic types of approaches, but you guys did. You went through kind of the full spectrum of all the FDA approved medications, yeah. all the centers. You covered everything. RNS 62. Okay. Um, but yeah, we really did. We checked every single box, and that was was exciting. Is because once we got here, we realized, okay, let's restart from lab work. What do, what infections do we need to uncover? Mm-hmm. What deficiencies did we overlook? Um, dietary mm-hmm. and the the injections. You know that really helped with strength. And- your dad came in, and he was pretty slight. How tall was your dad? Six two. All right, what was he weighing? I want to say like 120. Okay, and? Like, yeah, maybe maybe lower than that, honestly. We lost your dad December of 2022. Uh, what was your dad weighing at that point? 160. 160, and so you guys can't tell that are watching. Marianne, so Ken was a tall guy, lanky but really tall. Marianne, and you're one of five, like yeah. five girls, uh, watching you carrying your dad at 160 became like a major problem because at that point your dad Ken was again 160 yeah. and still needed that that kind of support. I don't so think I was squatting the, that. The weight gain was a good thing and a bad thing. <laughs> yes, he looked good and he felt better, and that was important. He looked amazing, uh, and he used to say it. He thought he was Richard Gear. Um, he would send me texts, and he's like, I saw myself in the mirror yeah. today, and I look good, and he did. And his bright blue eyes, there was a lot of Striking. Life. Um, he always had this this cute, rosy cheek about him that yeah. I know I, I have, I guess, but that came back. He just started to be himself again, and he knew he was going to get better, and, you know, there's some things in life that we can't ask why they happen or what, but we are religious, and I think God has a plan, and... I feel him still that he's passed on and he's guided me to come back here and continue to leave his legacy and what he started and I have to say I'm very excited about what we're going to be doing and it's just the beginning of what I know will be bigger than all of us and what we can do and the impact that we can make with the team here and the people that come here so stay tuned yeah for all of that we've got one more thing to add okay so when you came in today I was in the back room and that's pretty common we've got three large IV rooms and so a lot of our medications are administered intravenously so IV so it's not uncommon for everybody to be in the rooms comparing notes and we'll go back and talk about all kinds of things and answer all kinds of questions so when you came in you came on back to that room because I was already there and we were going through all kinds of questions and you met somebody who also has been diagnosed for a considerable period of time and then he told us while we were there together he's regaining the use of his hands and I we it was so exciting to see the finger movements yeah you moved it it is his ring finger so we're very happy his wife is too (laughs) so what we know from just today so again the reason I bring that up The question I would have if I'm watching this, is it just one person that can get better? But what we're looking at is your dad, and your dad was a really unusually difficult scenario because he'd already had illness for so long. But then today, coming back over here, and it's hardly a week that goes by that we don't see people improving, but there were two people in that room. One, somebody that was getting the use of his hands back, but he hasn't been able to move his hands for years, and somebody else that was able to move his tongue and touch the tip of his tongue to the roof of his mouth again and move just a little bit, but both legs. So for me, what's always exciting is just the number of changes that we see routinely. And when you used to come here more frequently yeah. when your dad was here and we'd see it all the time yes it's, it's it's funny to see like that many changes in people and it, it's just i don't know it's it's the best feeling being here in the warm hug you know als is scary one to be diagnosed with um you don't need to have fears coming here we're going to get to the root problem the root cause everyone's seen as an individual because you are everyone has their own journey with all of this things that you want to regain strength with and get better and that's what i think is what makes this place really great and special is we're not trying one thing for everyone we're figuring out what you need 
So with your dad, your dad's point was, we really need a not-for-profit yep. to start defraying the cost of treatment. And I had been trying to get my arms around it for a while and just couldn't, just didn't have the time. So it was when your dad was here. Yeah. And his point was like, get it started, which was totally get your dad's done. style. So he called an accountant uh, and then we found you and I, somebody that was local as well. And he came over and your dad's point was like, I want to meet him. Yep. So the accountant comes in, he meets your dad. We start the not-for-profit at that same time. Yep. That was about a year ago. Uh, and then you and your family did the first not-for-profit, um, what am I looking for? As far as, but thanks, yeah. I couldn't find yeah. it. Uh, okay, tell us all how much you guys raised. Over $24,000. Okay, that's huge. Okay, right, that's really huge. Really exciting. Uh, my friend Margo is actually here with me that helped put together the whole fundraiser. Now, here's my question. I could bring the camera over and we... Oh, okay, Margo says no. <laughs> no. Okay, but here's... But Margo is behind the scenes. She's sitting yes. with me. And it's true, Margo. Uh, you were hugely instrumental in putting that together. So Marianne and her family they really did put together a fundraiser. The $24,000, for anybody that's wondering, continues to be in the not-for-profit, meaning it hasn't been spent. The reason uh, we're waiting for the board of the not-for-profit to really decide what's the best way yeah. of, number one, continuing to raise funds, and number two, the best way to provide it for people that have motor neuron disease. Uh, the not-for-profit is committed to using all of those proceeds directly for care yep. and so you have another fundraiser coming up in march yes so this is january right now so in yes. two months you're doing We're another really one. excited um and i just want to encourage everyone you know reach out to your communities and make things fun life's too short mm -hmm. um Whatever makes feel you, my dad, he was a big dancer, he loved to party, so we're continuing to just do that in honor of his in honor of him this year. Right. Fun the, the fundraiser is in a restaurant and it's yep. like a party for the night. Yep, party for the night. Yep. Um if anyone is curious on how to start a fundraiser or uh, how to donate directly to our foundation or even if you just want to experience about something you can do for yourself um, to just get yourself here for treatments because we know it's costly or can be let me know reach out I'm also in the Facebook group I'm more than happy to my free time I love spending helping others so that's what I want to be doing and I'm still a part of this journey so is my dad I don't care what anyone yeah. says he's right here so <laughs> the website for the not-for-profit it is the body science not the it's body science ALS foundation dot org yep and so for anybody that wants to take a look, go ahead over there. We'll continue doing fundraisers. Yep. Uh, we just had a meeting about a month ago, just kind of putting ideas together. If there's anybody watching this that wants to be part of the not-for-profit as far as the actual organization, yep. let us know. We are always looking for volunteers uh, and help with this whole thing. Yep. Well, listen, it's amazing. I haven't seen you since last March. So I know. <laughs> this for me has been amazing. I'm so glad that you're here. Um, the life that you bring is just it, the spirit, the energy is so great, Marianne. So everybody that's watching, we will keep you in the loop yep. with what I like to refer to as Ken's legacy. Yes. Knowing that if Ken was here, he'd be like, that's right. That is mine. Like that's <laughs> <laughs> So we'll continue to, to do updates. Yeah. And we can't do it without all of you. So I really want to emphasize that this and is, this place will be what we make it. Hey, Marianne, show us your dad's signature. Oh, yeah. This is his sweet signature. All right. So thank you. Ken, just know we are here thinking about you all the time. Thanks, yeah. Marianne. Thanks.